you continue in the cloud, uh, get to get into the cloud uh, of English and Christian English cloud of unknowing, unknown, unknown English uh, writings. On the cloud of unknowing, <laughs> chapter seven. And if any it rises up and keeps on wanting to force itself above you, between you and that darkness, and ask you, quote, what are you seeking and what would you have? Question, say that it is God you would have. Quote, I want him, I seek him and nothing but him. Unquote. And if it asks you what that God is, say that it is God who made and redeemed you and who has graciously called you to his love and say that you have no understanding of him. And therefore say, quote, get back down and tread the thought down firmly with the stirring of love, even though it seems to you most holy and as though it would help you to seek God. Or perhaps it would bring to your mind various beautiful and wonderful instances of God's kindness and say that he is very sweet and loving, very gracious and merciful. And if you are willing to listen, it desires nothing better and it will chatter more. Chatter more and more till at last it brings you lower to remembrance of his passion. And there it will let you see the wonderful kindness of God. And if you listen, it seeks nothing better. For soon after this, it will let you see your old sinful way of life. And perhaps as you see this and think about it, it will bring to mind some place where you used to live in the past. So that in the end, before you know it, you will be scattered. You will not know where. The cause of this scattering is that you first listened willingly to the thought, answered it, accepted it, and let it work freely. Yet, nevertheless, what it said was both good and holy, so holy indeed that a man or woman who hopes to achieve contemplation without first going through many such sweet meditations on their own sinfulness, the passion, the kindness, the goodness, and the excellence of God will certainly go wrong and fail in their purpose, and yet all the same, the person who has had long practice in these meditations must always leave them and push them and hold them down far beneath the cloud of forgetting. If he is ever to pierce the cloud of unknowing <laughs> between him and his God, therefore, whenever you resolve to undertake this work of contemplation, feel that by grace you are called by God. Lift up your heart to God with a humble stirring of love and think of God who made and redeemed you and who has graciously called you to this work. And accept no other thought of God, and do not accept even those thoughts, unless you choose for a naked intention directed to God is fully sufficient without any other goal than himself. If you want to have this intention wrapped in and folded in one word so that you can hold on to it better, Take only a short word of one syllable that is better than one or two syllables, for the shorter it is, the better it agrees with the work of the Spirit. A word of this kind is the word God or the word love. Choose whichever you wish, or another as you please, whichever you prefer, one syllable. And fasten this word to your heart so that it never parts from it, whatever happens. This word is to be your shielded spare wherever you ride in the peace of or in war. With this word you are to beat on the cloud and the darkness above you. With this word you are to hammer down every kind of thought beneath the cloud of forgetting. 
So if any thought forces itself on you to ask what you would have, answer it with no more than this one word. And if, in its great learning, it offers to expound that word and tell you its attributes, say that you wish to have it quite whole and not analyzed or explained. If you will hold firmly to this purpose, be sure that the thought will not stay, and why? Because you will not let it gratify itself with sweet meditation, such as those mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. He's almost talking of a mantra, <laughs> chapter 7. In uh, the cloud of unknowing. Hmm. Now here, we move on to John Main, the unselfish self. One of life's questions that everybody has to face is how do we become holy ourselves? How do we become a person in our own right? It is very easy for us to, to merely to try to please our parents or our peers or the aims which society we live in imposes on us. Yet we know that unless we are fully ourselves, apart from these pressures, we will never feel real or authentic people. As you must know from your experiences, the only way to become a real person in your own right is to establish real relationships with others. And it is in relationships knowing and being known that your full self emerges. But before we can enter into any significant relationship, we have to know ourselves and be ourselves. We have to have some sort of understanding of our potential for being, for relationship and for love. It is this that meditation is about. Meditation is the first step towards establishing the basic human relationship, relationship with yourself. When you meditate, you do not try to please anyone, you do not try to respond to any role or any image of yourself, perhaps we all do to a certain extent. At the beginning, we see ourselves as some holy Buddha, about to levitate maybe, but we soon get over that once we start meditating on a regular daily basis. The romantic understanding of meditation quickly gives way before the experience of the real thing. In fact, it is not only that you give up trying to respond to an image of yourself or someone else's image of yourself, but in meditating you let go of all images. All right. You empty yourself of all images. That is what meditating is about. It is the process of emptying out all the fantasy, all the images, all the unreality. So space is made for the real you. It's sort of like in the cloud. The real person you are, here is a way of looking at meditation. It is a way of making space for yourself to be. In religious terms, people often talk about loving God, the loving your neighbor and loving yourself, but I think only a little experience with meditation will show you that the true order is the other way around. You must first learn to be yourself and to love yourself, and secondly, you must allow your neighbor to be themselves and learn to love them. And it is then, and only then, that it makes sense to talk about God, and indeed, the less you talk, and think about God in the initial stages, the better. Let us remind you how to meditate. You have to learn to say your word, <clears throat> your mantra. The mantra is like one of those signals that keep flashing in the dark, guiding a boat to port or an aircraft to the runway. It flashes in the dark. When you begin meditating, you have to say your mantra in the dark, you have to make that act of faith that this tradition goes back for hundreds of years, that has been discovered and rediscovered in every century, and that this tradition makes sense and that it makes sense for you. All these considerations points towards saying your mantra as a process of freedom. You are freeing yourself from the images, the fantasies, the memories that take you away 
your freedom to be who you are in Christian vision of meditation. The whole purpose of this process is to be free your spirit, to be open to infinity. Allow your heart and your mind and your whole being to expand beyond all the barriers of your isolated self and come into union with all, with the all with God. When you start, you will find all sorts of distractions in your mind. The purpose of the mantra is to bring the mind to calm, to peace, to concentration. And the way to do it is to keep saying the mantra. When you first start, you will find that you will find that if you say the mantra continuously, faithfully, then after about 10 minutes, it will probably bring you to deep peacefulness. You will be amazed and you will say, quote, I had no idea I had this capacity for peace. This is wonderful. I'm just going to hold on to this now. <clears throat> and I'm going to stop saying the mantra. When you do this, one of two things happen. You enter into a state of reverie, just floating nowhere, and that's exactly where you are nowhere. Or your mind is immediately filled again with all sorts of distractions. So when you are starting, be absolutely clear in your mind that the way to meditate is to say your mantra from the beginning to the end. Don't allow any experience of well-being that you want to possess or hold on to or any narcissistic approach to prayer that you may <clears throat> be encouraged to adopt distract you from the truth of the continuous selflessness of the mantra this is what makes meditating absolute simplicity Repeat the mantra silently in your heart and keep it going. You will soon find a steady rhythm that, it, by which to say it either with your breathing or with your heartbeat. Do not bother too much about the technicalities when you begin. Say it, repeat it, sound it in your heart silently, and the mantra will lead you to silence, to discipline, to concentration. If you are faithful to it, it will lead you eventually to the bedrock of your own being. Beyond all the roles that you play, beneath all the masks by which we hide, beyond all the images we have of ourselves, we'll find the person God creates and loves in eternity. To learn to meditate, you have to understand that it involves a daily commitment. There are no shortcuts. There are no. There is no instant mysticism. Meditating is like breathing and eating. It is part of the fabric of daily life, and as breathing and eating strengthen the body, so meditating strengthens the spirit, purifies it, and makes it strong. We read about the unselfish self, and the way of unknowing, which is somewhat based on the cloud of unknowing. <laughs> Hmm. These two are like brothers and sisters, <laughs> only this guy is much older. The English, we're reading English uh, ideas of meditation <laughs> and Christian meditation. John Maine and the author of The Cloud of Unknowing. And the name of the author is the author of The Cloud of the Unknowing. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. The second one you read was a Christian meditation. It's John Maney practices Christian meditation. Mm. 